Thank you to our four sponsors for supporting our podcast. Johnny Russell's Art Caterers and Milktown Pies, Alexander Grace Law, Jez and Lisa's Spoonful of Sweets and SPE Furnishings. Links to their websites are available in the show notes and on our website. Don't forget to subscribe to get all the latest episodes as soon as they're released. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Law House's legendary podcast, The Housecast. It's a bit of um, a pushed-in episode, this. We generally only do two, sorry, one episode every two weeks. But because of what's going on at the club and because of various events, and because I think we're more excited than ever, anyone else, and I think also feedback we've had from some of the fans, we've decided to squeeze another one in. So... And probably because I missed last week's and Gav Shields did a fantastic job, so I want to get back and um, see if I can get my seat back. So anyway, welcome. I'm going to talk through the the games last weekend. We've got a great guest on who's never been on before. Um, he's a top lad who I'll introduce you to very shortly. I'm sure he'll give us a great insight into Lancashire League cricket. Played quite a lot. Uh, got tons of wickets and runs. But before we go there... We'll just go to our great friend, Joe Martin. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Very well, thank you, Jess. How are you? Yeah, OK, thank you. Yeah, I'm just... That, that uh, good? Yeah, no, it's good, though. No, the weather's turning. I was fed up when it was raining this morning. I had a bit of a weekend away, and then the weather was poor. And then... Um, but it seems to be coming good this afternoon and for the rest of the week and next week. So, yeah, it's all it's all fine. I see you've got... Is that the, the hat that you actually play in, Joe? Uh, this is my just my sort of wondering about hat. It's minging. Look what, what different oh, colours are there. I can't believe that you brought that up. Yeah, people say it's this, but it's just a hat. So it's just a hat. It's, it's, it's a work. It's a work. Probably. Uh, it's just a working hat. Good, good. So I'm glad you're on, Joe. You've got your hat on. You're all comfy in the West End room. So, uh, so I let's don't spend move that on. much time here anymore, Jez. Just so you know. No, I think COVID's put paid to that. We had some good times in there, Joe, didn't we? Me and you took yeah. to work. Yeah, nobody bothered us. No. We now kept everyone bothers us. Yeah, everyone, everyone. So let's introduce Toxie Hussain. How are you going, Toxie? Thanks very much for coming on. Yeah, good, mate. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate it. Oh, it's our pleasure, really. Uh, it's really good to have you on and, you know, and get that get that overview from, a, a you know, an experienced player who does a fantastic job for the first team. Um, how... Uh, you know, how, how are you finding this season? You know, we've had a good start. There's some real competitive cricket. And we'll come on to how well I think that you're playing between you. How How's this season going for you personally? Yeah, it's going well. Uh, it was hard at the start of fasting, first three games. Yeah. Uh, so a bit tough, to be honest with you. And the lads helped me through it. And once I got through that, uh, the first game back was on Saturday against Hazzy. So it was good. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, that that's something. Let, you know, let's talk about that, Toxie. What what is the the regime? What do you have to go through well, to make it so difficult uh, to the sport? It's from sunset, uh, sun or from sunrise to sunset. So basically, that like five f- five o'clock in the morning until then, you you can eat. Then about eight half past eight at night, you can open your fast. So all day you can't drink or eat or anything like that. So it's like basically a car. Twelve months you drive it, don't you? So, yeah. and then one month you're gonna easily get a service lack the body. 12 months you hammer your food and stuff, and then one month you detox everything. So, similar to that. Cracky, what a good analogy! That is a you know, great way of putting it. But I must say, if you looked at you know yourself, you could probably compare yourself with maybe you know a, a, a Bentley that's probably 10 <laughs> year old, and I'm a, a Ford Fiesta that's probably 35 year old. But saying that, I'd just fill me so full of food and not do anything. So you, you'd continue to train, I guess, doctor. Yeah, train on his gyms helped me a lot. Because, you know, after yeah. after opening up, after opening up, I used to go to gym as well. So yeah, it's, it's been it was good, but it was hard when I play cricket. When I'm playing cricket, it was tough. Honestly, the last game, less Norden, I struggled. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I'm glad it's over. 
Yeah, that's. I mean, I mean, I'm glad you give us that because we you look at the the Premier League footballers and they did have breaks, didn't they, where people could go off and get some some drinks, some fluid inside yeah, them. Yeah, definitely, but definitely. Like uh, morning and salad, they actually requested uh, the team to have an early training yeah. session in the morning, rather yeah. than in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you do need that fuel, you know, as as athletes, as sportsmen, when you're training. If you haven't got that fuel in there, it, it must be so difficult. So all credit that, Toxie. You know, I'm really glad, glad we brought that up. All credit to you for working through that. Um, so the season's gone, you know, relatively well, I think. You're working hard as a team. Joe Martin, we chatted about this two weeks ago. Um, you know, I am noticing the bits that I'm watching. There is something there, a little bit more of a spark. And I know we chatted about last season where you're all you know, a little bit nervous and things didn't go right for the first, in the first two or three weeks. Is that continuing to improve the way you see it, Joe? Yeah, I think so. There's a really good atmosphere in the, in the squad at the minute. And we obviously, we've had a good start and we can't get complacent. We've still got lots of hard work to do. But yeah, this team is, there's something about it and it's, um, uh, and it's sort of working, working hard together. And it's and the Hasland and game showed that this week actually I think yeah yeah and I think it's good Let, let's move on to that let's move into what happened in the Hasland and game and talk through it I didn't watch that game but I've watched quite a few other games and I, you know and again you know I'm there I've you know I will speak my mind and say things that I think about various players and decisions but I've got to say the way Ben is handling things the way things are going it's unfortunate that, that Stephen Stephen Parry the pro has been injured. But prior to that, and I don't think it's as a result of that, I think that things have been handled very well in you know, the build-up and, and the way you're progressing. So let, let's have a look at the, the Haslinden game. So we've won the toss and decided to bat. Toxie, did you have a look at the track before the game? I never look at the track, mate. <laughs> What's the point? No, honestly, you know, before the game, uh, I said to Joe uh, on the channel, I go, uh, I think we win today. I think 11 low half damages. I said, we back ourselves, we win. I think. And Joe, and Joe was like, I don't know, but I'll go to Joe honestly. Yeah, I, he I, did. I, I, had a, I had a feeling. I go, we win, we win, win today. Yeah, we did. We, we, we talked in our chat quite a lot, actually, about, yeah, we do, about yeah. different, we do, we do. different bits of the game. Yeah. Um, and, you know, some people are different, uh, but I think that I know nothing about wickets or pitches or anything. So if you have a right. look at it, I wouldn't have a clue. But right, you know, right. that first and crack on. Well, that's what I was going to come on to. That's what I was going to come on to. So we've got this uh, this track that you know clearly has not has not played as Stan would expect it. And bearing in mind that we've gone into the game, which is you know no criticism of anyone whatsoever, but with no professional because they're literally because of the visa problem of pros coming in the country because a lot of other clubs. Uh, play on Saturdays and the counties are difficult with no professional. But I genuinely believe, as Toxie alluded to there, that we have got the amateurs that can step up and you know and take that responsibility. So we'll we'll move on and we'll talk about how the game started, etc. But it's it's interesting now. We've got our managing director that's just dialed in at just at the right time when we uh, we didn't have a professional. Hi, Stanny, how's it going? Very good, Jess. Can you hear? Me? Yeah, can yeah, you hear? loud and clear. Very good because I've got my headset on and it's not coming through the headset; it's just coming through the microphone. So, did you, pl- did you plug it in, MD? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Stanley, just we just we just welcomed Toxy. Tox had just gone through, um, the, you know, the period when he was fasting for the first couple of weeks of the season. It was it was fascinating. So we've talked through that. We've now gone into the game against Haslingden, where I've. I've asked about the tracks, but neither of these two Muppets even look at it and know what they're looking at. So we'll, we'll have to carry on and we'll chat waste, about that. A waste of time. A wasted worry, keep looking at that bitch. Um, but we then started talking, Stanley, about the, the fact that we didn't have a professional. Stephen's injured. How is he? How's, how is his ankle injury going now, Stanley? Um, it's getting better, we think. Um, OK. He was hoping to come, off, come out of the boot this week. Um, yeah. And it's just a case of, of seeing how it goes. Um, right. One is that if, if it doesn't if it doesn't pull up okay this this last couple of days, that hopefully um, Lancashire will put him through a scan 
tomorrow. Right, OK. So, so uh, uh, that comes out. But, yeah, um, obviously massively frustrated for losing too early in the season. He actually first picked up the knock prior to the first game of the season, or prior to the, the, um, the Ron Singleton Trophy and everything else. But he was able to get through those games. And then I think he just rolled his ankle or something. I wasn't at the ball from all the game. The covers, I think, and rolled his ankle. Joe, is that right? And um, it just sort of went down up from there. Didn't it? Yeah, I think so. It, it seemed... I, I must admit, I didn't see... It. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I didn't really see anything. Yeah. When I, when I got back to the club um, for the balls and game, Joe Benaducci immediately came to see me and said, um, the pro's knackered on here when you get back somewhere else. Um, yeah. It's also a bit harsh, I think, as well. <laughs> So anyway, he's um, he's obviously missed um, missed the last last few games. Um, so and I went into the to the plan at the moment. So we've got some professional league, Andy and Holland, who plays for Hampshire, um, opens batting for them, and he's just changed forward. Okay. Um, Australian represents America as well. I think international, an interesting one for us. Um, and and then hopefully, um, Paz will be available to play against Green now. Um, a week on Saturday. We'll see how that goes. We've just got one game that weekend. Um, it, as long as he's fit, we'll see how that goes. And, uh, Good, no, that's great. Stanley, breaking news on the housecast about the uh, the professional. That, that's good to hear. Put, put some pressure on Joe Martin to get the, this podcast out by close of play tomorrow. Uh, it is a nightmare, Stanley, isn't it? We, could, we can go back for donkey's years, trying to get sub-pros. Um, and is it worth just talking through the visa problem that, that, that a lot of clubs are having at the moment, getting yeah. the, the, the the legitimate pros in, the pros they've signed into the country? Yeah, well, um, the visa issue uh, first became a major, major problem in about 2009. Um, right. Uh, the Home Office changed all the rules um, around the visas. Uh, and it's been difficult ever since then. I don't know if you recall 2009, where we had to have, um, literally, we, I think we had about seven different players. We had Ian Butler for a few games. We had a number of different players. Um, and it's settled down since then. But at the moment, I think because of all the COVID season that the broad have been a bit disjointed, so we've got a lot of pros missing um, at the moment because that has been delayed, those kind of things. We've got pros that, that aren't yet in the country. So... The biggest problem we've got when we come to the floor market and it happened with a year with hockey um, is a lot of the clubs that you're competing against uh, have known that they needed a sub pro for weeks. So Aslinden, for example, going to Saturday and they known that their pro wasn't coming for about four weeks. So they're four weeks ahead of your search for pros and the best thing is to put the weeks and weeks in advance to prepare them. But if, you, if it's as a result of injury, you just join the back of the queue, don't you? And you're up against teams that are prepared and are asking around for pros for weeks. You're also up against um, teams that have had arrangements with pros and, and have got a good relationship. So for example, Wolves have had the same guy a few times. I know he didn't play for them Saturday, but those kind of things are against you. So you, you are fishing at quite a small small pot and what you're trying to do more than anything is calling the day, doesn't it? Yeah, and that is, I mean, you, people won't think of it like that. You know, or, you know, they might think, well, you've got, you've had Ruhan, but he's, you know, you literally have to fly him, you know, into into the into England from from his club in Ireland, and you know, that comes with extra expense, um, extra problems that, that that brings, and also he's, you know, he's got his own club over there. So yeah, yeah. I hear what you say. Yeah, and equally, James, you're relying on on the good will of people to help you with that. So we fly Ruhan in on the Saturday. He's a bed to sleep in on Saturday night and a bed to sleep in Sunday night. He needs someone yeah. to pick him up from the airport Saturday night to need him, someone to take him back to the airport in the morning. So yeah. um, you are, and, and Paddy and Ben, particularly, I think, have helped with that. I took him back on to an ass 4 30 a.m. start to get him there. Um, yeah. yeah, you are just relying on Google Tales with that as well. So it's, um, it's not easy. And it, it, no. it's me, um, I'm more about this. I go to league rules and people talk about. Putting rules in to make it harder to get sub pros. So they'll say, for example, you only allow, we should have a rule where you only allow four sub pros a year, or we should have a rule where you can't have the same player more big time. It's just nonsense because it's hard enough as it is. So why make it harder to have one? I just don't, I don't understand the logic. It tends to be clubs that have been very settled with a pro and not had any need. I think when they wake up to very different when they start having not realised that actually, I guess they're making everyone volunteers a bit of like hard work. Yeah, I, Stan, you know, you, you speak into to an open door. In as much as how the rules do need amending and changing, and gone are the days. You know, I think it used to be a lot of the rules around the pros were written for the richer clubs who would just sign 
you know, a, a pay a fortune for a sub pro when other clubs come to afford it. And and I think those days are gone now. We I'm not saying we can all afford it, um, but it's just not available. And you know, and and to restrict where they're going to play does make it more difficult. No, so I mean it's a great insight that Stanley, and I and I really what a great shout out for the for the volunteers. You know, people who watch Lower House or or other clubs. And you know they won't realise they're running around. The players have to do the you know the the committee, all voluntary. No one's getting paid for this. They're getting up up at half past four and going to the airport and bringing him back, and then they're playing the game. So no, all credit to those people and uh, a big shout out to them, Stanley. Thanks ever so much for that insight. Let's move on to the game. So eleven amateurs turn up, win the toss, and bat. Joe, you've been relegated to batting number three. Finch is come in to do a job because of the lack of the pro. And um, and I, Frankie wasn't playing either. Toxie said, yeah, I think we're going to win. The way the, the, the game started, Finch is out really early, then Ben's out with 26 for two. How did you feel that was going then, Toxie? I know you like a good wand around the ground and you keep walking around. How did you feel it was going then? Uh, it was a bit... I just thought when Ben got out, I thought, well, we've got a few, but we've got Paddy to come in, Charlie, yeah. we've got Blaise, Dino. Yeah. We've got so yeah. many battles down the order. Uh, I've, I've, I've never been one of them to think, oh, what's going to happen? Because we've got so many bat- batsmen. So I just thought, we've got, if uh, Charlie and Blaise and Dino get going, we'll be all right. And Joe as well. Joe was batting well. Joe went in, he been all right. But he, Joe will tell you more than myself that it was hard uh, batting on that wicket. Yeah, I think it was hard, Tox. But at the same time, I don't think it was 110 played 100 and. Six, no, I think, yeah, you know that's, I, mean? I, think so, I think sometimes we have a problem where we sometimes look at the wicket and we already judge the wicket rather than just play play the ball. Yeah, I think sometimes teams that come to us that walls, they just play the man, they don't look at the wicket. We yeah, sometimes they don't look care. at the wicket, we sometimes, yeah. uh, and we sometimes look at the wicket more than look at look, look at the ball. It's a great point that talks in you, you, you know, you when you. You go to the first class game that you know the likes of you know Peterson and these you know extraordinary players Shane Warne they would say the same look just play them play the man you know you, if you've got a one on one competition you play the man so is it right in thinking then Joe as your um, I mean you've gone out to bat relatively early on um, it's it's not popping around your head or anything or shooting round and taking your ankles out no it, there's it, it what there was no um, irregular bounce or there wasn't anything that was particularly suspicious in the wicket it was yeah. favourable to the bowlers, you know, they could seam it, conditions also meant that they could swing the ball as well um, so it was a challenge, it was a challenge to bat on, as it was evident with the scores, but um, it, you know, it might have been one of those wickets where, you know, you could keep batting and as Toxie says, you play the you just play the ball, but at the same time I think potentially there was a kind of situation where there was probably a ball with your name on it. Yeah, and I also think in games like that, I mean, I didn't, I didn't watch that one, but I think we've all seen enough. Those are potentially the games where you end up fifty all eight when you you think let's play positive. You know, certainly the likes of Dean and Charlie, you know, and maybe Finchie and Ben, but you think let's play positive, let's you know, yeah. let's try and beat the conditions. Whereas when you look at look just looking at the scorecard and. And, and and watching Twitter or listening to, to to Adam, who was keeping me updated, it was about batting time, I think, yeah. and get, getting through. As Toxie says, knowing, you know, you've got Tom York Robinson by eleven, Toxie at, at ten, and Tom Walker at, at nine. You know, that's a that's a great tale, but you don't want to be sat in the tent with, you know, with eight or nine uh, overs to go. Again, let's you know, let's talk about Henry Cotton there when you know he's gone in. With you know, Joe, you've batted for for a you know for a good number of overs. You've been in for eight or ten overs. Put a bit of a partnership on. Paddy's gone in, done the same, fifty three balls, and Henry's coming as well. How how did he cope with those conditions? He was great. He's had a very good start to the season, actually. I don't know why yeah. I said that. I don't know why I said actually then, because I, I if you listen to the other podcasts, I I I expected it. Um, yeah. Uh, I didn't sit on the fence on that one, Jess. No, uh, no. no, he's done fantastically well. Um, and he offers the team something different. As a left-hander, um, you know, they have to change how they're, how they're bowling and uh, he's a fantastic player of spin. Um, but he has batted in some really 
difficult situations. You know, Ramey, Norden, and then the game at Haslingden, um, again, against Haslingden, sorry. And although he probably didn't get as many runs as he would have liked, he occupied the crease and he took a lot of pressure off um, Paddy, who we batting with for the majority of his time. I think it's, um, he's had an excellent start at them. He's obviously, he had a great start at Rams bottom. Um, and you made an interesting point there, Joe, uh, the left-handed aspect. Um, I know me and Ben have spoke about it a few times about we have no left-handers, we have no left-hander in the team. And sometimes you just need a left-hander just to change the dynamic of the game. I know that right? yeah. and he's not going to come in and smoke it about all over the place. But when you watch him come in against Rams bottom and um, Johnny Field was causing no end of problems to all the right left, 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 left hand. Yeah. And Henry came in and played him fantastically well. He just sort of nullified that threat that, that Johnny was causing on that day. Um, and it does it, it up a little bit and it can run on the same, same, same thing time after time. So, um, and the way that he's come in and he's scoring, scored uh, the runs that he has and used the balls that he has and he's played, fantastic. It has. It has. It's been really good. And, and then, as I've said, you know, it sounds real old cliche this or certainly from an old duffer but using the using the the balls up frustrating the the opposition whether you're getting a lot of runs or you're not getting a lot of runs and it doesn't always work but I do feel you're better off even if you know you've you're all out with 48 overs gone it's better than being all out with 35 overs gone I think that's so demoralizing so Henry's done a great job there Dean's come in you know maybe stayed set a little bit but I'm not sure it really is Dean's track as you know as much as um, you know, as an attacking player, he is. Then Blaise comes in uh, with 52. Well, um, Dean played a very interesting shot. Right, go on, talk me through that. <laughs> I didn't see he it. smashed a like, one bounce four um, off the pro, I think. Um, got a single or whatever, and then reverse swept one to second slip. No way. It was very unlucky because he yeah. plays that shot really well. Plays that shot really well. Um, and the point you make as well, Jez, about you know you could be fifty all out without Toxie and Blaze, we could have been. Yeah, you could have been, but let's you know. So then I'm contradicting myself for you. We know that Dean plays that way. So does Ben, you know, and, and Finchie in the side. But you've, you know, now we've got Joe Martin, we've got Paddy, Henry, Blaze. You know, Toxie's an experienced player who can you know can counterbalance that if that shot had come off. Oh, absolutely. And, and then he progresses, ends up 30 on and eight, and Tox comes in and does well at the end with Tom. We could end up 160, which is Yeah, you know, you, so you don't chastise him for playing that no, shot when he's done it no, he's done it so well. I mean he, well, I, I described it as inter- I described a lot of things as <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Sometimes uh, yeah. being honest, sometimes you do have to camp to attack, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah. It. You can try and sit in, you can try, but if Joe Joe yeah. alluded to earlier, if a ball's gonna have your name on it. You might yeah. as well. You might as well play a few shots and try and try and sort of get ahead of the game. If you can. But, yeah, but again, a lot of that standard depends on the type of player you are yeah. and what their their bowling attack is. So we'll come up. We'll come on to that. Bless comes in, and clearly, you know, you know, from from what I saw on play cricket or on Twitter, we're blocking the crap out of it for the first over or two. You know, which was the right thing to do. Tom's come in and gone out, and then Toxie's. Toxie's coming to back. Toxie, I think you've come in at 59 for eight. You know, what did you have a plan? Did you discuss it with Blaise how we're going to go or just, just wing it? I, first of all, I was shocked to go in, to be honest, and I think 50 yards for eight. I thought, what's happening here? Uh, to be honest with you, I said to Blaise, the only thing I said to Blaise is back time. Yeah. And he, he, he laughed. I said to Blaise, I go, Blaise, I want to see one of your innings. Right. I go, Blaise, the yeah. longer you stay, the longer you play innings. And honestly, I. I just we just played the ball. We didn't honestly Bless didn't say to me about the wicket. He just, just played the ball. We just kept playing, we kept playing, we kept playing. I looked at the scorecard. I go, hold on a second. We've been here quite a while now. Uh, yeah. So we just carried on batting, to be honest with you. We didn't we didn't really uh, we didn't really make it hard work, to be honest. It was okay. We, we no. enjoyed it. We, we enjoyed it. To be I, I thank Joe and Bless because they've been throwing the balls to me for the last three, four weeks on Tuesdays. They keep yeah. throwing balls to me. I uh, thank them, and I believe I felt comfortable about batting anyway. I've been saying to Ben, let me bat. Yeah. And he's going to get yeah. time and come. Well, it's, yeah. it's, good. it's a team game. Because start of the season, we've said to everyone in our team, the difference, you say, is 1 to 11, we bat. Yeah. Over the last few years, we've been getting bowled out with about 10 overs left. 
Yeah. But this year we've seen less about all the others. Yeah, and, and not just not just that talks, you know, as as a spectator, that sort of, you know, just class me as a, a spectator watching it. it. It's so good, you know. Look at the scorecard now. You have massively contributed to winning that game for Law House. Dean massively contributed to winning the game at Norden. Henry massively contributed to winning the game at Rana. And they're three players that, yeah, you'll win games with us with the ball. And Dean might win one or two a year. But we've only played, you know, four or five games. And we've had three of the, you know, the, the I'm not saying lesser players, but Toxie's won us a game with the bat. And Dean's performed and got that 50. So that is, that is fantastic to see. What were the Haslinden players? You know, when you first went in and then how you when you continued. Obviously, when you're on a roll, you're on a roll, are you? Yeah. So it was funny, I, I played a I played a quick shot with two slips in. And uh-huh. I laughed at myself. And I laughed at myself. And I played it, and that's the shot I played. And I nearly got caught. And I, I went down the wicket to play. And I go, Glenn, if he bowls again, I'm going to play again. And he laughed yeah. at me. And I think with time, with time, they know they knew we could bat. They knew I could bat with Blaise. And Blaise, obviously, Blaise is Blaise. Yeah. And they said themselves after the game, they, they said, you, you know, just batted well. You just batted. You just batted. We just batted. We, we didn't look at the wick here. We just kept batting. We kept batting. We kept batting. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I mean, you've, so then, I mean, I lost track a little bit. You know, so, I mean, for the record, Blez has 20 runs off 59 balls and you've 32 off 48. Mm. And we've batted the 50 overs. We've got to 109. We've not given them two points. Did you push it along towards the end? And did you uh, think, you know, yeah. I feel more confident? Uh, fair play to Ben. Ben said, if we get 100, we'll win the game. And, you know, at first I thought, what's going on? But honestly, when I batted at the end, they had a medium pacer. Uh, they had a yeah. medium pacer who bowled about four overs at the end. We couldn't touch him. But we tried right. our best to go after him. We couldn't touch him. I said to Blaze, I'll tell you something, be in the game here. Because I have to bowl yet. you got a walker to bowl. Yeah. you got a pinchy to bowl. If he's yeah. doing that, we could do the same. Yeah, yeah. And that's a difference, you know, 80 to 100. It, it is a big difference. And then you've gone yeah. over that 100 mark. And the fact they don't bowl you out, so they're, they're going off the pitch. The dressing room, Joe, at half-time, was that upbeat and you were confident enough? Yeah, it was uh, buoyant, um, to say the least. Buoyant, I like that. <laughs> uh, but Tox, actually, on the day, made a... After, and everyone knows, but after, after we'd finished, Tox actually made a really good point about his batting. Um, was and and it's that the players aren't batting like their batting number suggests this year. So you're not going in thinking, well, I'm batting at number ten, so I need to bat like a number ten or I'm bat like a number eleven. You know, as everyone has said, you know, Toxic can bat. He scored six hundred runs in the in a season once, and you know, Tom Walker's had you know fifties, and Tommy Robinson's had a double hundred. You know that. So it's. I think that mindset's played a really important important part in that. Um, but in terms of the uh, the team at half time, I think we were we were com- we were confident. If we took early wickets, um, you know, I think that they would be. We thought that they'd be nervous, and whilst they were only chasing a low score, and you know, likely as they would chase it down. Um, if we took early wickets, we think we thought that we'd be in in a good place to put more pressure on them and potentially win the game as well. And we have said so many... Yeah, yeah Tox, go on, Stanley. Uh, Tox has said um, that as a team we've spoken about using the overs and, um, and, and batting for longer this season. And I, I think so far that, that's been that's been under what was... Um, but I think it's an interesting point, that if you look at the, the, the way our team's made up, so um, obviously we lost Johnny at the start of the class and so the box office and batting. Uh, we've still got some excellent batters within that side. But... Our bowling options are probably second to none, especially with Walker that we've had this year. Probably second to none in the league. You've got both, uh, Walker, Orke, Toxie, Frankie, Paddy, um, and Paz. There's six bowlers that bowl every week. You've got back up to that in um, Finchie, um, and you've got Ben. He's a bit of a golden arm, if you're being honest. And come on and take a look. And Henry, um, can, and Henry can bowl, Stanley. And, and, yeah, and you, you, you can then throw in a, a third spinner in Henry. So, so I think that and, and Joe and Tox have said that we don't necessarily look at the wicket and think, like, right, what, 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 how's it going to play or what's it going to do? And we don't want to overthink. But I think if you're out there, and I know Ben, but if you're out there and you're backing yourself, like, right, what's going to be able to score on this? With our bowling options, we've got a bit of everything, haven't we? So Tox has said that Seema came on for Aslan, and they, we could have put a bat on him. So Tox thinks we're in the game. We've got 100 of them. We've got 
because we've got real players over there in the bank. Yeah, I agree. And again, as we've chatted about so many times on these podcasts, certainly, and I'm not, you know, we're not giving away any of our secrets or tactics or anything. Um, but momentum is a massive thing. Once you've got that, you know, Tox has done a fantastic job. Blez has come in and, and done what we know he can do. Um, you know, after, you know, let's not hide from the fact, and we will talk about it, Blez, you know, got dropped to the second team the week before. That's the strength of the, the squad at the club at the moment. He's come in, he's done what he's done, so the momentum then rolls in to, to the Haslinden side. It affects them negatively and it affects us positively, you know, I feel. So how did that, how did it start? Toxic. Great move again from Ben. He's give you the give you the the, the, the cherry for stuff. Uh to be honest with me, like Joe said, we thought we get the pro mini out. Um uh, they won't last. And I haven't bowled all season with the new ball, but obviously the Mardi games I will bowl with the new ball and a ball from the um, the park end. And we bowled well, to be honest, me and Walker, we bowled well. Um we kept it tight. We kept it tight, but there weren't much wicket and look credit to Ben. The good thing he's done this year. He's changed it at the right time. So sometimes you make a move where it works and he's changed it and it's worked. And obviously in the low scoring game, uh, you have to change and he brought Paddy on. Uh, you know Paddy, uh, Paddy did a brilliant job. And once we got the pro out, once we got the pro out, they didn't know what hit him. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting, you know, you look at, I haven't got a rundown of the, the runs that were scored per over, but they've obviously got a steady start. You and and Matt Walker have, have obviously bowled extremely tight when you look at both your figures. So they're not getting away from us in, you know, as much as Griffin, eight runs off 35 balls, uh, Hunsley, six runs off 36, Barda, five runs off 23. So it's the opposite of what the batting was about in as much as dot balls are important, maidens are really important when you're building up that, that pressure. So Paddy's come on, um, he's taking Griffin for the first wicket. So yourself, Toxie and, and Matt have, you know, bowled, I'm guessing, three or four overs each early on and gone for next to nothing. Then Paddy's come on and taken that first wicket. Is that what happened? Yeah, that, definitely. I bowled five. I think Walker, Walker can only bowl seven. I think he bowled five as well. He brought Paddy yeah. on uh, and straight away, Paddy, when, when Paddy got the pro out, that's when the game changed. Yeah. Because that's when they went into the shell. They thought, what's yeah. happening? Because they're pro going to score most of the runs. Yeah. It's yeah, and he's, he's, isn't he, he's, um, he's a very disruptive player in um, this class. One of the guys that gets called into the 100 squads and everything else, isn't he? So, um, yeah. so you look and think, is this guy just going to come in and say, chase a low score, take it away from us in five or six overs? Once you've got him out, all the pressure on the amateur, um, yeah. massive, massive point of the game. That. It is, and there's a lot of overs gone there. You know, you, you're looking at you know, probably 15, 16, 17 overs that have gone already. The pros out, their opening bats have, you know, have worked hard and, and grafted for it. But then you've got Macintosh and Friend have come in uh, and seem to have moved it, on, moved it on a little bit. Did the game seem to be going away from us there, Joe, at that stage when the, those two were together? Um, I don't know whether it was going away from us, but I think that the, uh, I think it was finally balanced at that point. Actually, I yeah. think if we'd have taken one of those wickets slightly earlier, yeah, I think then we would we would win in a slightly easier fashion. But they were like, but you know, they were allowed to have a partnership like like we did with Bles and Toxie. So it was about staying in the game and just uh, sort of thinking thinking through. Uh, and Ben captain fantastically well. You know, chopping and changing his bowlers and bringing and bringing people on at the right time. That that's a great point, that that Joe, accepting that they'll have a partnership. That's where a lot of clubs, and we we did it, we used to do it, where there is a slight partnership, you know, it took, we all think it's gone to ratchet straight away and you can't, you know, you can't, we, we, that's it, we've lost, we've only got 105, but it's all credit again to you guys that you've stuck in uh, and kept that going. So even at, you know, 80, 80 for 8, 86 for 9, was there some doubts there between you two, between Joe and Toxie of, we're not going to, you know, we've done work so hard, but we're not going to do it. To be fair, that, like, well, yeah. like a young lad did well to the bat, or has he? Is that that sip got? No. Uh, the, um, the other young lad. Uh, the wicket keeper. Oh, Brennan. Brennan. Yeah, he's yeah, three Brennan. three runs for yeah, 23, he, up, he had a, he 23 had a good, balls. Yeah. He had a good forward defence. Honestly, he did really well. He did. Yeah. He did really well. Um, he's obviously been around the block and, and knock it over the ropes, down it, so yeah. Mm. Yeah. Never certain, are you? I'm always nervous, Jez. So 
it doesn't matter. But I think, you know, prior to that, Toxie came on and, and bowled brilliantly well to take. How many wickets did he take in that second spell, Tox? All four? Yeah, all four. All four. It was, it was brilliant. Really, really, really good. Really, really, I mean, honestly, Jez, he was getting the ball to swing, uh, you know, and move off the seam and, and swinging it really late as well. So it was really, it was really hard. Uh, and he came on from a different end as well, which I think suited Tox uh, that day. Um, so it was fantastic. It was very good. Um, Brilliant. But they kept creeping closer and closer, Jez. Yeah. Did you ever think we were going to win? Did you ever think we were going to win, Joe? Did you? I, 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 I didn't when Joe said watched it that at that six <laughs> to take him with him four. I thought, oh, here we go. We've had a good, oh, we've, had so a good we've had a good effort. So really, to summarise that, you you know, I'm not blowing smoke up your backside, Toxy, there, but 32 or 48 balls, you know, to get us up to that 109, and then to take. You know, four for eighteen off eleven is fantastic. That's that's a, a hundred and a seven for in you know in most July and August on good track. So fantastic, fantastic, well played, Toxie. And um, you know that 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 will you know it puts us into second place in the you know in the league and in a good position. So great work. So anything else before we move on to the words of the cup from you three guys? No, I just think it was a a fantastic performance by. Uh, Toxie, it was outstanding. Really, really was one of his best for the club. I would, I would say, amongst yeah. many. Can I add, Jez? Um, it's a team, yeah. uh, Jez. It's, it's a team game. Uh, we have to play our part, don't we? Well, yeah, exactly. You know, you know, honestly, you know that with Charlie in the side, Ben, because Charlie used to be captain of the team as well. He makes a big difference in the field because him yeah. and Ben get him and Ben. They've been together a long time, and he has yeah. ideas and stuff like that. You know. It makes a big difference. We've been together for quite a bit now, to be honest with you. Yeah. The team has. Yeah, of course. It, 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 that's another great point that that you know that camaraderie is going on there, and and it's building up, and it is momentum. Just always remember that, and people who are listening, players yeah, who are listening. The, I think the beauty of is of the game is we won without a pro. We won eleven yeah. low house amateurs won the game. It's yeah, massive. yeah. Dan, Dan makes a massive thing. Dan makes a massive yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, it does, and it'll send out messages to people. They'll be, you know, whether they listen to this or they don't, they'll be, they'll be looking and thinking, crack, you know, that they are sticking together. As we've said, you know, Dean, Toxic, Henry winning these games for people, it's fantastic. So we'll move on to Sunday. We're at home again, against this time against Laura Ace. I know you two don't look at the track, but it was obviously a different track. Was it close to the one for a Saturday or not? It was two up, Jez. It's remarkable yeah. what 24 hours in dry weather can do. Yeah. It was really flat. Yeah. Yeah, and I suppose that bit of wind that we're about, and if the sun's out, it, it will dry it quite quickly. Um, so again, we've won the toss. So we, you know, we're doing the right things when uh, Ben's calling very well, and we started off 175 for none. How did those two look, Toxie, when you watch them? Uh, really, really good. Joe said the other day, uh, you know, one of our top six, uh, one of our top six, will go on to score some big runs sooner or later. Yeah. Top six is going to start scoring some runs. Maybe get a big total on and. Ben and Charlie, they did the right thing. Sometimes when you play, you know, this is what Rodgers go to the two sides, you you get relaxed a bit. But these are the games where you have to take your form in and you have to get in and play shots and bat and they batted time and brilliant knock of uh, point world yeah. uh, world points you winning for the for the club. Yeah, it was a you know record worst the oh, partnership of 175 for the first wicket, and I'm guessing. You know, we've got Ruhan, who was the professional in the Where's the Cup final last year against Clitheroe away. He's come over. Um, we all know how he can bat from what he did in the Clitheroe game and the pedigree he's got. Stanny, you were watching this game. Were you, obviously, you'd be, quite, you'd be like the cat that, that got the cream, getting Ruhan over and, you know, for a, a few people watching on a nice day. How did it feel like, uh, how did it go for you for that, that first hour or so? Yeah, it was... Uh... Ben and Charlie back an excellent way. Uh, they put every bad ball away. They tend to some great jobs. Um, but it was quite quite funny, really, because when the over started, I think we got down to the last eight. It was a sort of, uh, it felt like in the ground, people were looking like, come on, lads, we've come to watch Ruan as well. Can, can we um, can we see a bit of him? Yeah. So, um, as well as they were doing, you could, you could, you could sort of sense that people were thinking, you want to see the guy who smashed it all over the club or And, um, Ruan came in and um, he did similar to what he did at Clitheroe, started 
um, a few singles, gets a feel of the place, and uh, and then all of a sudden he's loose, and uh, he's got freakish power. But the way it's the ball, the places it's the ball are just um, phenomenal. Like I say, it, it is a freakish type of, uh, of power. You don't see very often in that. I don't. Yeah. I don't think Jez that you'd if you were if you were trying to teach a, a child how to hit you know a straight six or you know like a slog sweep or something. Mm. I don't think I would. I wouldn't even start to think about how he is able to hit it. His his wrists and yeah, and his position. Speed, isn't it's incredible. Yeah, it oh is. yeah, I haven't seen anything like it for a long for a long time, Jez. No, is is the nearest thing. I mean, I didn't see that innings on Sunday, but watching the final last year and and little bits of footage of him, is it not a case of it's a little bit like the the England setup probably five years ago when they taking on you know, the white ball game, that they were trying to do that more, play with the the wrists and work the ball into gaps using the wrist, Butler and uh, Owen Morgan. is it, That's the type of player he is, I guess. And it's not just a freakish nature. He's worked on that of to, to, you know, knowing where his power is and knowing where, you know, what part of his body to use. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I think it is. And it, it, it is remarkable to watch, especially when you think you're watching it on... Um, greatest respect to, to Bob Griffey, probably not yeah. the best pictures. Um, and, and you're watching somebody hit a ball um, like he hits it. It's fantastic to watch, don't get me wrong. And um, he hits a particular shot. It was a waste half full toss. He landed in about one in Thornhill. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but behind him, you think, how on earth has he hit that ball there? Yeah, um, yeah Christ, I forgot about that. It, it yeah, it went miles. on Thornhill Street. And, it, and it's yeah. a... I've seen I've seen people hit four nils. I've seen Chris Cairns hit four nils. I've seen Jack Rudolph hit four nils. But theirs were all straight through the line, sort of just over over long off, long on. This was literally picked up and whacked behind it um, yeah. over Graham Martin's head on the gate. Remarkable. Yeah, yeah, it is. and it's such a good memory to you know you as players that you've played with this lad who can do that, and you know he's, you know he's still a young lad who knows in the future sub prime for us or. Or, or anything else, but 109 or 49 balls, and he's out. You know, I still was the. I think there were three or four hours to go, yeah, was not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he was out, yeah. so you know, a fantastic effort. 175 for the first wicket, and then just con- you know, constantly adding the runs to it, and you know, Frankie and, and, and Dean batting him around him. Paddy Martin's batted very well, um, and we've got to 350 um, off our 50 overs in that cup game. You know, they've for for the, the benefit of the listeners in the cup, you can only bowl a maximum of ten overs, so five bowlers bowl ten overs, and that's what Rockstall have done. They've they've done the best in trying to rotate that around. Again, and I'll it go was back to you. Jez, in that he, yeah. he sped the strike to Ruan as well, and it's, yeah. it's where I think um, had it's developed so much in the last two two years. I think um, he's become far more dynamic in the way he plays. That's um, he, he, hits, he hits the boundary more often, but equally on Sunday, he just nudges the ball into a gap into the one and gets the lad into the ropes onto strike. And that's brilliant. Um, you've got someone to stop the lead around for that and uh, get him facing that ball and Paddy was excellent in that. The area, that, uh, it's, so, it's so true. Paddy's such a talented cricketer and he's added yeah. that extra extra you know bit to his game. So, half-time lads, Joe, talk to whoever wants to come in. How was uh, What was the feeling like in the dressing room then? Uh, obviously, like I said before, we we can't. Sometimes we have a habit of re- relaxing. But any game, cricket, you know, this is a funny old game. If their pro comes off, it's happened to us before. When he slams the three, four years ago, the high scoring game, and their pro come off, and we lost, we lost, we lost the game. So we just thought, let's do the business properly and get through to the next round. Yeah, yeah, that is good. It's so easy to just rest on your laurels, and and especially when you know in games like that. Rockstall are in the second division. It could be a case of crikey, this lot aren't going to make hundred. So it's good, a good professional approach to the game because he ended up getting two twenty. Um, it only takes a pro to get. You know, we've seen massive scores in the in the league over recent years. It only takes a pro to get 150, 160, 170, yeah. and they're and yeah. they're well in the game. I know it's a big yeah. score, but he did look last for play as well, didn't he? Yeah, I, definitely. I've not heard of him before. Yeah, but, he's, uh, yeah, he's he's definitely play. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So if we uh, will fly through that, you know, they're, they're openers. I mean, we've got um, 
the pro got their opener out early on. And then there's a, there's a decent 60 odd stand for the next wicket, but then the pros out. So again, they're up against it. But the amateurs have done well. Mm. You know, Shafiq's 53 off 34, which is quite short. Ahmad's 30. You know, it's you know, there's a little bit of collapse in between with Roscoe and Etchells. But then there's a bit of a partnership towards the end. But I'm guessing, you know, with all respect, once the pro's gone and we've got then five, six, seven down, it, it really is game over if you know if we've been perfectly honest about it. Um, so a fantastic win. You know, the, the pro only bowled six overs, 22 for three. How were they quick coming through, Joe, compared with the Northern game? Um, yeah. What do you mean, yeah? How were they coming through? Yeah. yeah uh, you weren't was, even the, listening, were you? Pit, yeah, no, I did. I was just thinking that it was... I didn't want to say anything about the pitch. Because <laughs> <laughs> it got a bit slow. Oh, did it? Yeah, and it didn't... Dead second minute, wasn't it? It was very... It was really flat, Jez, yeah. you know. See, no, that's interesting. There's nothing that, more I, mean, I can say. They do. They used. To, you know, when when they get too dry, they do go rubbish in the second innings. But I, I don't think they got too dry. But it wasn't. Pros, rub, it wasn't it, rubbish for batting at all. You yeah, know, you, you, you had a fantastic to battle. I would yeah. imagine not required this but, weekend. <laughs> not, in then, that, uh, not in that game anyway. Henry's got a couple of wickets coming on bowling his spin seven overs, two wickets. Yeah, but well, um, so, it, so that's good to see. And for Henry, it'll just be. Exposure, getting used to bowling yeah. in the first team, and yeah. I've got no doubt so it's going to be great. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fantastic and, and a great win. So through to the second round, and I think it's fair to say that the draw's been made, and we've got Burnley at home, uh, which is a great draw. I think let's get uh, let bring it on, get a good crowd on, and get through to the to the next round. MD, you happy with that? You might get some some money through the gate. Yeah, I, I, I always um, I do always dream of the, the, the sort of Arsenal final, don't we? That that's the, always the sort of what we love. But I think drawing them in the cup, um, yeah, it's a bonus getting a, that that home game against them. Hopefully the weather's kind. Um, football season's finished by then, and we can get plenty all down down once. Yeah, especially with yeah, one fewer T Twenty game as well, MD. Yeah, absolutely. See, Joe, you're at home, home isn't me? The strategic yeah. thinking, MD. Yeah. No, it's fantastic. So what I'll do is I'll just, there's quite, you know, we had a podcast, it was only a week ago, and yet there's been so many milestones over the last weekend. So I'll, I'll run through these milestones and then come back to you three to see if you've got any comments about what I'm going to mention now or any other comments whatsoever before we wrap it up. So I think um, we've got that Blaise is the only ever cricketer in the Lancashire League to get 8,000 runs scored at the home ground. At his home ground for one club. Fantastic achievement. Ben, 100 games as captain this weekend. Again, a fantastic achievement. Paddy Martin's got over 300 league wickets now. He's uh, he's going up that that ladder. And there was another one that Adam has just sent me a message. Uh, oh, that's it. Paddy is now the leading wicket taker in, Lank- in the Worsley Cup for Law House, overtaking uh-huh. some... Yeah, overtaking some phenomenal uh, ph- phenomenal efforts. The problem was, Toxie, in my day, we never got past the first round. Yes, I had to take oh, all I'm sure, ten. I'm, I'm sure you did. Yes, we got, we got a bye in 1994. <laughs> <laughs> and then got knocked out in second round. Yeah, the first club to get three byes in the same club, same we got yeah, a bye. Yeah, bye. that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. So that that's some, you know, some fantastic achievements there. And... Joe, we are going to talk about this and we're going to talk about it more as we go on. Joe Martin has now got 350 victims and he's the second best wicketkeeper ever at Law House. And I have no doubt he will continue uh, on to get the extra 166 victims so he can catch the legendary Brian Higgin, which would be so good that if you, you two were hugging on the, uh, on the decking. In, in three and a half years' time, as you've passed Iggy's record, that that would be absolute monumental. We could even have... record, yes. Um, I'm a 166, add 350. So 560. That's what, yeah, Adam sent me a message that he's 166 behind. Right. So, um, you know, yes, so great. Yes, yes, in my eyes, Joe's the best keeper. Yeah, well, I, hang on I don't know. I mean, there's lots. Yes, he is, uh, yes, he is uh, unbelievable. <laughs> There's lots of great keepers in the league, Jez. You know, uh, Harry Caton yeah, uh, at Ramy and Burt yeah, at, um, at Burnley. 
There's lots of great uh, keepers. I, I, I'm a top three. I think Joe's the best. But, uh, he's the best. He, do, he doesn't say it. He doesn't say it, but he's the best. He's the, the nicest man and the best keeper. <laughs> they, well, that's he has to, ben, has to, uh, ben, ben has to have a go at him saying, Joe, you don't have to be nice all the time. Yeah. No, you're, yeah. you're 100% right. But I don't think he's got off to an arc that... Um, that stop down the leg side that Iggy used to have when Curtie Ball, when he went like that, he kicked him <laughs> on the chest. The stop. Yeah, that's a different... Diff- Toxie, you're perfectly right. To be fair, right. though, Jets, to be fair, Jets, Peter Schmeichel then adopted that late and played him as a football. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Stopping, so, yeah. so maybe yeah, he, he was an innovator. Yeah, yeah, it could have been. No, Toxie, you're 100% right about that young lad. He's such, a, he's such an asset to the club. And mm. you know, for, for, for the quality that he does show. No, honestly, and he also... makes a, even you've got a good keeper behind the stick, it makes life so easy. Yeah. It gives us yeah, bonus yeah. confidence, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I've always thought of being tested No, no, yeah. honestly, it makes a big difference. Yeah, it does. And uh, and not missing those games, we, we we're still on with that to uh, Joy and missed a game for, for a couple of years. So we'll uh, <laughs> we'll 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 keep on top of that. I'm sure there's plenty of things we can chat about. So we'll uh, we'll bring this episode to to the to its conclusion very shortly. Again, Toxy, I really thank you for coming on. It's great to to listen to your insight and what a performance on Saturday. You know, you deserve all the accolades you've uh, no, you, know, no, you, you honor, get in for, and you've got. You having me on, appreciate it. Yeah, you know, we really appreciate it. So, Toxy, is there anything else you want to add before we wrap this up? Um, Ben's. He's got a uh, hundred game as captain. Fair play to him, to be honest with you. He's uh, yeah. it's hard, it's hard as a captain, to be honest with you. Uh, to do that is a, is a great thing, and honestly, he's coming on uh, leaps and bounds for the club. Paddy, as you yourself, cleaned the wickets. I said to Paddy, the day you, you retire, I'm going to retire with you. <laughs> 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 no, we can't have you both going. You, you're both young spring chickens, yeah. You've 20 years left, yeah. You're not finishing. So I, I, I only say I go to Padel. I only, all, I only play because of you. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't play, I'm not playing. Brilliant, brilliant. You've plenty of years left in you. The, the, the lot of you, Stanley. Okay. Is there anything you want to add before we uh, we wrap this up? No, no. Just um, whether's uh, whether's booking up now. Stop to start seeing more and more people down the pub in the coming weeks. We've got. So you put it at the start of the day, we've got the friendly T20 this Friday against our friend uh, Paddy Young. So, um, yeah. an annual event. So, yeah, let's, um, let's start seeing the place uh, fill up now and um, selling places. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, well, good point that, Stanley. So, like, for the spectators and the fans and the whole community uh, around the cricket club, I'm right in thinking, Stanley, all our home T20 games or Friday evening look out on social media are we having the bands on and we're having food yeah. and pizzas and all that go on tell yeah. us about that yeah the usual script jazz and um, three pound adults and three pound adults two pound children or it might be pound children and um, yeah bands beer um, and uh, entertainment on the pitch so yeah yeah it's brilliant thanks yeah and anyone who's not been down if you're listening to this it, it, it's a fantastic atmosphere you know, literally hundreds and hundreds of people down, families, children are down, just having a few pints, and there's two great bands on that I've seen already. So let's, uh, if you can, come down and support us. And oh. the best DJ in the business. DJ Dooch. D- That's why you couldn't make it tonight, Jez. He's, uh, he's just polishing his decks. And, uh, <laughs> right. He's his playlist ready. Oh. Right, fantastic. Yeah, if, if people, if you've not heard of this lad, he's... Uh, a fantastic young lad that can spin a pizza and he's a top <laughs> DJ. DJ Dooch is in the house. So, yeah, come down and listen to, to, to Joe introducing the players and playing the, the music in between. Joe Martin. Joe, Jez, he's less David Getter than more Fat Getter. Right, I'll, I'll leave that with you to discuss with him. He's a busy lad tonight. Stop taking the mic. Joe Martin, anything you want to add before we finish? Uh uh, but yeah, just a, a couple of things. It's been a bit of a love in this episode, hasn't it? Really, that's uh, I can edit that bit out. I mean, the awful thing to I will edit that. Bit. No, don't but, just, uh, it's, it's great. Nice. It's it's excellent playing with Toxie. It is really good. Always, always good value. And on our walks round, so that's always. <laughs> and the other mention is just for the twos who lost on Saturday at Haslingdon, but there were still some good performances. Deck Metcalf got sixty odd, uh, and they won in the cup on. 
Sunday, again, some good performances. Aggers returned, got 40 odd, I think. Yeah, it's a good point that, John. We will, for the for the spectators, every month or so, we will get an update, a, a, a you know, a complete update to end the second team and the junior sections, the thirds, the fourths, and the junior sections. So please, everyone, keep listening. You'll get all the latest news on this. We've had some great feedback just recently. Comments along the lines of, we feel included. We feel like we're part of the dressing room. It's fantastic to listen to the, the views of the players, etc. So it is worthwhile us doing it. It's not difficult for us. We have a laugh and a joke. So people, please subscribe and follow and like and tweet and everything else around the housecast. And then you'll get your episodes earlier. And who knows, we might have another competition soon. So thanks everyone for listening and uh, we'll catch up again soon. Gordon, Gordon, send more house to save the house.